You know what one of the hardest parts about making videos are? Picking the right video to make at the time. See, way back in June, I had a few different ideas I wanted to cover off in the series. These included things like Redwall, Warrior Cats, The Animals of Farthing Wood, MLP, The Chronicles of Narnia, My Pride, and Keepo in the Age of the Wonder Beasts. While I agree that all of these topics would have been fun to start the reboot off on, I was having trouble narrowing down to just one. After some time, I decided to go with the My Pride series since I had more of a solid idea to go over, but Keepa was still one I thought I had more time to cover over. It wasn't until after I posted the video did I find out that season 3 was the last season of Keepo. I thought I missed my mark on the whole thing. But after taking time to collect my thoughts a bit more, I'm glad I waited. It gave me more of a chance to give my overall opinion on the series. That Keepo became one of the top leaders in groundbreaking storytelling. For those curious of what I mean, then sit back and relax as we go over Kipo in the Age of the Wonder Beasts and how it is truly a triumph in storytelling. Hello everyone and welcome back to Wolf Tales where literature runs wild. I hope you all are okay with the April Fool's video that happened about two days ago. I've always wanted to try it out and I'm so grateful I got a chance to do so. Though for people who were excited to hear about the things in Starling's past, let me know in the comments below. I might put Starling's backstory in a future milestone episode. Or maybe a few, we'll see. For now however, it's time to talk about the incredible brilliance that is Kipo and the Age of the Wonder Beasts. Created by Radford Seacrest, Kipo is a fantasy dystopian story focused on a girl named Kipo and her time on the surface after she gets lost. Kipo, along with her friends, Caring Benson, Clever Dave, and Brave Wolf, must help Kipo find her way home. As time passes, the trio must fight many enemies, explore the mute run surface, and truly discover a place where they all can belong. Much like other work Seacrest has worked on, Kung Fu Panda 2 and How to Train Your Dragon 2, Kipo has a darker edge to it, filled with high stakes and real-world problems to face. Themes of prejudice, trauma, ideologies on violence, death, love, and even the definition of what makes a family comes up a lot. Characters do die in this world, some are tortured beyond compare, and some are permanently cured. The latter part, by the way, is actually permanent by the end of the series as there is no way to revert the mutes at the end of the season and doesn't appear to be in the future. The show caught my eye like many others and has been a recent favorite for many people as time has passed and the show has ended. But what makes this show so good you may ask? What makes Kipo so special? Why is it a triumph compared to shows like Steven Universe or MLP that had longer seasons and movies? Well, the short answer to that question is this clip right here, near the beginning of Season 1, in Episode 6, Ratland. You should know something. <laughs> you like me as a friend. Yes! Because... I'm gay. That, that right there being said in a cartoon aimed at children, teen, and young adults is by the fang awesome! Not only is that said in today's media, but it means so much for the future of storytelling. But I'm jumping a bit ahead of myself. Before we go any further in this review, this is a reminder that there will be many, many spoilers in this review. If you want to watch the series spoiler free, which I highly recommend, then go watch the series now on Netflix. For all involved, pull up a chair, sit back, and get ready as we look at the first key point to Kipo's likability, the impact of events, and the realism of the characters. A sign of great storytelling, especially a fantasy series, is to have people connect to the characters as if they were real. The more a character feels real, the more the people connect to it and cheers on to them, which amplifies a person's enjoyment. Normally in a series there are maybe intricate lore or believable personalities that does it, but Kipo has it all. Lore steeped in mystery, yet is believable with what we are given. Characters with genuine and realistic reactions to scenarios. Personalities that tug on just the right heartstrings. Every last part of Kipo is unique and brilliant as the main character herself in my eyes. With how believable the world is, it is no wonder when the stakes get high, many were on the edge of their seats hoping for the victory of our Hamufa gang. 
Their triumphs and failures felt deserved, and seeing the characters die on screen or be converted was really heartbreaking. When Brad, Yumyun, Carson, Camille, Wheels, Bad Billions, and many more were hit by the cure, you really felt like they had died right before your eyes. And let it be known, Hugo Oak's scene still makes my heart hurt so bad. The fact in this world there are consequences to actions, death is permanent, and people aren't always forgiving makes the world feel real. Like the audience isn't just watching a show on a screen, but believes they're watching a window to another world. A world where the creators manage to cover off a lot of terrific and sometimes hard topics. The show's full of heartwarming scenes like Kipo reuniting with her mom that feel genuine while also establishing believable romances early in the series. When Benson and Troy fall in love, they make it happen in the beginning. Like end of season 1, beginning of season 2. This gives audience a plethora of time to see them grow as a couple and do average couple things like date, kiss, meet parents, and ask each other out to prom. Many series would have had the couple get together at the end of the show and build up throughout the series like She-Ra and Korra. But giving the audiences a couple to root for throughout the series gives us a healthy example of a couple growing and some great representation for LGBTQ couples. We'll get more into that later, but keep that in mind. The show also covered off harsh topics like the trauma Wolf went through with her old family. How it affected her personality, coping mechanisms, actions, mental state, and even the fact she never forgave Margaret in the end. Overall, Keepa was an incredible work, though I do believe it did something even greater. It made a genuine effort for diversity in its world and its fight against tokenism. Tokenism is the bare minimum effort of a person to include members of minority group without actually putting in any effort or much at all. This is often done for the purposes to gain attention for their work rather than strive for actual diversity. In the workplace environment, this is usually done by hiring one member of a minority group and leaving it at that. In shows and literature, we see this with labeling characters as the black character, the fat character, the girl, the person with a disability, and so many more. When a character is used more as an object than an actual character, that is when tokenism is most prevalent. By these characters being the only ones on screen a part of those minority groups, oftentimes the shows and books can use them as representations for all members of said minority group. While some may think this is a thing of the past, this is a practice still consciously or unconsciously used by many authors to this day. Power Rangers, Pokemon, X-Men Evolution, Totally Spies, Rainbow Bright, DC Superhero Girls, Teen Titans, Class of the Titans, and countless Disney movies all have example of pretty clear tokenism. This goes hand in hand with two other horrible practices, which is queer baiting, where characters hint at or promise audiences of inclusion of LGBTQ plus relationships without delivering, or queer coding, where LGBTQ plus traits are assigned to characters without actually saying they are a part of the LGBTQ plus community. These practices can be very damaging to audiences, but especially to the children who watch or read these works. As children, we try to find characters in media to gravitate to and learn from. After all, stories not only make up a big part of our development, but can also help us understand things as we get older. Some may gravitate to characters with personalities they like, or characters who look like, or act like them, or sound like them. However, when tokenism is involved, oftentimes these minority characters and actions are based on stereotypes and bigotry that the creators have heard. For children, this can not only make them feel bad about being in said minority group, but also negatively shape how they see themselves in this minority group. While I can give a few examples from media I've seen, I actually feel like the best example I can give is my own perspective when I was growing up watching media and looking at characters and how they depicted overweight individuals. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm not a skinny or fit person. I'm actually overweight and it's been something I've struggled with my whole life. 
While I am currently trying to work on being at a better body weight, growing up, I tried to look for any character to connect with. Where I would see many women like the Disney princesses be slim and trim and happy, overweight characters I found were obsessed with food and or jolly, stupid, and weak-willed. Specifically with women in this media, any woman who gained weight was seen as less attractive and sometimes even mean. It didn't exactly help my view of my body image when I was younger and even made me hate the fact I was overweight. This resulted in growing up, I never saw myself as attractive and the fact that I could never see an overweight character being a hero and more a punching peg for the Disney princesses or main hero to make fun of. For a while, I didn't think there could be any place for an overweight character besides a punching bag and that made me feel even more ashamed of who I was. But then, a certain show called Steven Universe and the Owl House came out. And to put it simply, I was excited as a little kid again. Steven Universe and Willow were well-rounded characters with different body types including a hero who was smart, kind, and terrific, while another was a secondary main character who was brave, honest, and clever. Both characters not only helped me feel better about my body weight and to do better with it, but even helped me come to terms with many of my anxieties I've been facing for a long, long time. Heck, Steven Universe even helped me with my own sexuality, something I've been having trouble trying to figure out for a long time. These stepping stones and efforts for diversity truly can make a difference in a person's life when done right. Which brings us back to the focus of the video, Keep Up. How the show depicts characters as genuine characters with these traits and not walking, talking character traits can make a huge difference in a person's life. Whenever a character is examined or their character is actually revealed, it feels very real and genuine. They're not shining their characteristics to make it all about that one characteristic. They are just well-rounded characters with these features shown. Benson is a gay teen, but being gay is not something that's above his head like a neon sign. He's just a well-rounded character who happens to be gay and strive for things everyone wants. A nice meal every now and then, a date with his boyfriend, and going to prom. He also has interests in cooking, music, dancing, amusement parks, and also faces challenges like running for his life and surviving enslavement. You know, like an average teen in a dystopian society. Then there's Wolf, who's a young child with trauma who overcomes challenges of trust and emotional constipation while also loving music, dancing, hunting, fighting, and chips. Again, like a normal person in a situation she has been in. Kipo puts characters first above trying to make them tokens for one minority group or walking talking examples of one character trait and instead makes them likable and lovable characters first and foremost. Heck, even the fact Troy and Benson are dating or something like Wolf not wanting to forgive Margaret is not even covered in one episode and then forgotten. They are played out naturally throughout the series and brought up as often as they should. No one also forces Wolf to try and forgive Margaret because the reality is, she wouldn't probably in that case. No one also points out how strange, special, or wonderful it is that Troy and Benson are dating because they're gay, but they're just happy to see a good couple together. As the viewers, we can see these traits and examples as being natural and okay to have them ourselves. In my own experience, I'm in a polyamorous relationship and have three wonderful partners. Seeing LGBTQ plus representation with Benson and Troy demonstrates to me that it's okay to be in the relationship I'm in and feel good about it. Seeing Wolf overcome her trauma and move forward in her life helps me feel like I can come to terms with it and move forward to a happier life as well. It's diversity like this that truly makes a show a one of a kind gem and pave the way for better storytelling for the future. And that Dear Watchers is the true triumph of Kipo. Kipo may have come after shows like Steven Universe and She-Ra who helped pave the way, but this is a gigantic leap in storytelling that will lead to even greater things. 
After all, it just takes one show breaking boundaries to encourage other media to do so as well. Perhaps we could see more LGBTQ plus characters take on the spotlight. Or maybe main characters will be people of minorities to take on better stories with better depictions of that minority group. Or maybe even a Disney princess who's overweight or has a disability. Regardless of what comes in the future, one thing is for sure. A new age is dawning thanks to Kipo. And if it's anything like the show, then it's one I can't wait to see play out in all its wonder. And that was Wolf Tales, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please toss a comment below and remember to like and subscribe if you want to help the channel grow. For now, I gotta get ready for another collab I'll be doing next month with an old time friend. We'll be covering over a little something we've had our eye on for a while about anthropomorphic animals, predator and prey relationships, and the effect it can have on its world and the dark reality it presents. Join me next time when we'll be looking at an anime that's taken Netflix by storm with an upcoming second season. Till next time, this has been Silver Starling. See you next time you want to run with the pack.